Greetings, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode number 296 of Ask Dave. This is the third and final report on the My Antennas end-fed half-wave 80 through 10 meter uh, antenna that uh, in a previous video we unboxed it. The video after that we put it up and looked at SWR performance and now in this video we're going to look at receive performance and a look at uh, transmit performance. Now for the receive performance I'm going to use my software defined radio uh, as the tool and we're going to be on 20 meters. Uh, it just to make it easy the antenna seems to perform well on all bands. I have three antennas that work on 20 meters. I have the MFJ hex beam. I have the step IR big IR vertical antenna and the NFED half wave uh, that we are testing today. So what I'm going to do and just to explain just a little bit what you're going to be looking at. You're going to be looking at the waterfall on the software defined radio looking at the entire 20 meter band and I'm going to be switching between antennas and I have labeled which section goes with which on uh, the uh, display so you can tell which antenna is which. So let's just jump right into that right now. Okay here we are I'm, I start out on the beam uh, there's lots of CW activity today. Now with the my antennas you expect it to be down just a little bit because this is after all not a beam. Uh, the real comparison is here with the step IR big IR vertical and uh, they're both unity gain antennas and you see about the same there. Some signals look a little stronger others actually look a little weaker. Part of that has to do with where the signals are coming from. So you see the hex beam again and now the my antennas uh, pointed there and back to the step IR big IR and you can compare them they look an awful lot alike except for that signal at uh, uh, the uh, FT8 signals there. Now that is affected uh, to a great deal by where those signals are coming from and it's a little bit random every time. Look at the bulk of the CW signals and compare the CW signals between the two. Now uh, what you're finding here the hex beam is pointed to the east by the way so I'm picking up the east coast. Here is the antenna under test which is picking up uh, FT8 just fine. And uh, then we uh, have the step IR, uh, big IR right here with a signal about the same. So I'm going to say that the my antennas and the step IR uh, pick up about the same here. Now what I'd like to take a look at is the actual transmit performance. How does it perform on the air? As you noticed from the SDR uh, waterfall there, there's not much happening on sideband today. And... Um, I didn't get very far with my attempts to do sideband. Everybody seems to be on CW today. But I did get on FT8. And what you're looking at here is the list of stations that I worked on uh, FT8. I uh, worked quite a few. Uh, this is all on the myantennas.com uh, uh, antenna. And uh, you can see that the... Um, the signal reports are all over the place, as you might expect. Uh, we have Canada, USA, and Mexico. Now, from where I am sitting in the Intermountain West here, um, we've got California, British Columbia, Oregon, um, and uh, lots of uh, different places here that are reasonably nearby. Okay, I'm not picking up the East Coast or anything like that. That's because the antenna is very low. Even on 20 meters, it is low. So uh, that means that we're going to be acting kind of like an NVIS antenna, and these results show that. So what is my final analysis of the uh, my antenna's NFED half-wave 80 through 10 meter antenna? It is a perfectly viable antenna and uh, can work well. Now notice you're going to need 130 feet at least um, that you can run this antenna 
Uh, I've run it in the inverted V configuration, which I discovered with the MFJ equivalent is, is probably the best thing to do. Uh, run it and you know get the center up high and then the ends don't have to be quite so high. It does uh, work uh, well uh, I think on all bands that it attempts to work. Remember that 80 meters only gives you the CW end of the band but that is also the FT8 end of the band. I think the antenna is rather pricey for what you get um, but you're getting a very good quality build and uh, uh, the wire is, uh, was kink free in my case. Uh, of course, I was very careful to unroll it properly and it seemed like it's going to last a good long time. Uh, the case where the ballon is, is very sturdily built and uh, they seem to have a real winner of an antenna here. So um, do I recommend this antenna for those who are in a situation where they have the ability to get the center up a bit? Uh, yes, this is a good antenna. On the lower bands, 80, 40, and uh, to some extent even 20, it's going to act like an NVIS antenna. You're going to get your nearby states uh, under some circumstances, especially if you go up into the upper bands, you might get uh, some DX on this antenna. It's not a beam. It does not give you the gain that a, a beam does. And then this uh, hex beam that I have from um, MFJ is, well, high gain, I guess, is uh, actually um, does have uh, several dB of gain and works very nicely on 20 and above. So I've shown it to you comparing it to the very expensive Step IR, Big IR uh, vertical uh, versus uh, the NFED or the um, versus the uh, beam and the, uh, the the least expensive of all these antennas is the my antennas. So will it work well for you? It probably will. Is this a good DX antenna? I'm not so sure. Uh, you'll pick up DX, but not to the same extent that the beam or the vertical will. So there you have it. You know, every antenna has its pros and cons and so on. But now we've tried several different antennas to go with the reference station. Remember, the reference station is just something to refer to as you design your own station. The reference radio is the ICOM 7300, which we used for these tests. So we have several antennas to look at. Uh, the very interesting off-center fed MFJ 2010 antenna um, works on all of 40, all of 20, um, much of 10, and uh, much of 6. And of course what we're interested in really is the 40 and 20. Now there's also the MFJ 17754 antenna, which is a 4020 trapped dipole and it works on either the CW end or the single sideband end. You choose when you set it up. Uh, plus it covers all of 20. A nice antenna really um, and not all that expensive. Now I might point out that the 2010, which is the reference antenna, um, has a it's off-center fed and it has a choke ballon and the transformer ballon all built in and for a very reasonable price, well less than a hundred dollars. Okay, the 17754 is also less than a hundred dollars. Now the 17754 is 42 feet long, whereas the 2010 is 66 feet long. Now uh, Alpha Delta Antennas makes a very sturdy uh, antenna that is um, covers part of 40, you can pick the part, all of 20, uh, 15, and 10 uh, meters. Uh, that antenna is available. It's a little more pricey. It's about $150, $160. And now we've looked at this NFED half-wave antenna, which will give you a portion of 80. So um, if that part, uh, and it's the CW portion. Now they do have a version of it that does 75, which is the voice portion of the band, but it's not going to cover much more of the band. It covers about a 100 kilohertz of a 500 kilohertz wide band. But it does cover all of 40 
and so on uh, up. It doesn't cover 60, but it does cover 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meters. Um, so with the th multi-band antenna being built around an 80 meter a really an inverted V, uh, you're going to find some really weird patterns, antenna patterns on this as you get into the upper bands. And on 80, 40, and even to some extent 20, as we saw today, uh, it's going to be more of a near vertical incidence skywave propagation. It's going to transmit up uh, rather than out. And so it's not going to be a DX antenna on those bands. Uh, if you want more DX on those bands, you, you really ought to look at a vertical. So we've got several antennas in our kit bag now that we can look at. We've also looked in the past at the buddy pole and uh, the uh, octopus, and we've looked at the, um, oh, the one that looks like a clothesline there, um, the, um, not, not a spider beam. I've got a spider beam here. X-beam. I'll think of it. When I think of it, I'll put it in the comments. How's that? Okay, well, very good to talk with you about antennas. Um, antennas are always fun. We've looked at a lot of antennas. I'll try and get some stuff up on my website, so I've got a list of these antennas, and you can look at the pros and cons. Um, the antenna is the part of the station that, uh, well, it's very important to the performance of the entire station, but it tends to really reflect the individual likes and dislikes of the operator. So, um, you know, try different antennas. Um, the reference antenna, the 40 and 20 uh, also 10 and 6 antenna from MFJ is inexpensive. I would recommend that one as your first antenna. And then um, you can do something like this if you like to experiment, but it does not cover enough of 80 meters to really call it an 80 meter antenna. It's a tiny chunk of 80 meter antenna. Now, like I said, about 100 kilohertz wide of a 500 kilohertz band, but you can do FD8 on uh, 80 meters with this antenna, or CW if you want to do CW, but not voice. It does not cover the voice band. Well, that's enough rambling for this, so thank you very much for all the tremendous support. Uh, I'm about to start opening up uh, the membership option on the YouTube channel itself. Uh, this is a little different from uh, Patreon or uh, the PayPal options. Um, it's something, another way to support the channel. And uh, so I can do things like purchase the uh, My Antennas NFED Halfwave, which I did purchase with channel funds. You paid for it, and now you have my report on that. So take a look at decastlercom slash support for different ways that you can support the channel. Also, please subscribe uh, and click like. Uh, subscribing is very important to YouTube. That is their primary measure of how good a channel is, is the number of subscribers. And your subscription to this channel is your vote of confidence in this channel. And I greatly appreciate it. So until we next meet, 73.